Much anticipated tip moments away. Michigan State and UCLA. Both will enter as the 11 seed to take on BYU. Let's dive into some of these players here. Jimmy, what's on your mind with Michigan State? Well, Aaron Henry does everything <laughs> for the Spartans. Leads them in points, assists, and steals. Can get downhill left-handed, can finish with the best of them. Highly athletic. Now, if he gets it going early, he can be a problem for this UCLA defense. The key is for him to stay aggressive early. And speaking about aggressive, Johnny Juzang, the sophomore, 6'6". 15 straight games, he'll put up threes, multiple threes, three to be exact, at least attempts at 12 points against Oregon State. Loves to put the ball on the deck, attack, get inside, use that big frame to get buckets. So a really good combination, a really good, I think, matchup between Henry and Juze. UCLA needs great guard play without Jalen Hill. And as Jimmy mentioned, Chris Smith, is injured. They lost two big men. Tiger Campbell will run the point. It's Bernard, Juzang, Hawkes, and Riley. And then it's Rocket Watts, Josh Langford, Aaron Henry, Malik Hall, Julius Marble. Rounding out the starting five for Tom Izzo. Year number 26 for Michigan State. 23rd consecutive trip to the NCAA tournament. They were in the final four the last time the NCAA tournament was played two years ago. This was a trip to the tournament, though, Jim, that was in question except for a great run the last two weeks of the season. Well, when you beat Illinois, you beat Michigan, you beat Ohio State, you play in a conference that gives you opportunities to make up for some lost ground, Michigan State put themselves in a great position. But I'll tell you this, this building has not been kind to Michigan State. They're 0-5 in their last game. Now, again, that's playing against Purdue, yes. but it's still back here, right now. You still have those feelings, too, a little <laughs> oh, trauma come on, playing stop. here. Don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you won your last game at Mac. I did. Inside Riley, that is a travel and a turnover on the opening possession for the Bruins. Let's get into a little bit of what UCLA is going to have to deal with with Michigan State. They come at you with a lot of players big rotation and a lot of size which has given Mick Cronin's team some trouble. Yeah, and the, the size is, you know, not a post up that just going to beat you, but size to beat you up in defensive rebounding, offensive rebounding, and force you as a UCLA defender to pick up some fouls. First shot is down. Sweet stroke by the left-hander Aaron Henry. And boy, as he has gotten it going. He really changed the path here of Michigan State. You talk about those wins and big time victories over some of the top teams in the country in one seeds. Michigan, Ohio State, Illinois. It has been Henry's play that has propelled Michigan State. That's a nice answer. Johnny Juzang. How'd you know those on, two bro. were going to get it started? Listen, it wasn't me. You put me on it. You yeah. opened the door for me. They just happened to step up and perform early in the game to back up what we thought. Yeah. Put a Buckeye on the truck for <laughs> coming up with the uh, pregame elements. Nicely done, fellas. Little mid-range is good. So a couple of buckets early. Tiger Campbell running the point for UCLA. Tom Izzo recruited him. Campbell played his prep ball in Indianapolis. Now Lemire. Here's Juzang now. Matched up by Rocket Watts. Look at double dribble. And, yep. So carried it off the thigh. Tom Izzo is furious. <laughs> Michigan State has the ball back. And Malik Hall and Tom Izzo coming nose to nose. How about it? Rocket Watts has struggled this year offensively trying to figure out his place in the system. But is back in the lineup. A natural two guard who plays the point. But you saw it defensively. Not afraid to get up in his opponent's chest. Josh Langford in his fifth year at Michigan State. Been an incredible comeback story for him. Henry Mata got away with a walk. And that's a deflection, so no over in the in back. Five on the shot clock. Taking it to the rack is Rocket Watts. Now, great hustle that time by Henry. Could have gave it up. But then once the hustle occurred, that gave a three-on-two advantage to Sparty. And that time Watts able to take advantage of it. You'll see UCLA take just about every inch of the shot clock if they can as Campbell goes early and misses with the left hand. Possession-oriented team, especially as they lose two of their big men. Riley's got his hands full tonight. There's Marble again. Already hit a mid-range. Now a little turnaround 
jump hook is good. Well, if you're smart, Michigan State, you go inside to see if Marble can get it going early. One, you can maybe pick up a couple fouls on Riley, but second, B.A., you collapse the defense a little bit, make some plays, maybe get some open jump shots. Hakez knocks down his first three-point try. He has been such a terrific player for UCLA. Jaime Hakez. It's his first three of the game, 9-5, just getting started here at Mackey Arena, legendary Mackey Arena. UCLA visiting this venue for just the third time. They opened up this venue in 1967 with John Wooden's crew, Lou Alcindor. Came back in the Steve Lavin years in 2000, our colleague Steve Lavin, and now they're back for a third time. And it's not a matchup against Purdue, it's in the first four against Michigan State. When you think about it, Lav was an assistant coach, see a nice little post up in the middle of the lane that time by Hawkeyes. Steve Lavin was an assistant coach here at Purdue, so the connection for UCLA to come back and play mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Marble again, this time with a left hand. That's his first miss, and that'll be UCLA ball. All right, off and running. First time out of the game, Marble's off to a good start. The big man down in the paint for Sparty. Right hand, left hand, got the jump hook going. We're glad you're with us. It's the first four from West Lafayette. Nine seven, Michigan State has the lead and a pretty intense timeout here, Jimmy, with the Spartans and their head coach. Well, you know what? Listen, this is nothing new to me because I see it all the time. Now, this is between two players, Langford and Watts, explaining roughly about what they want to do, and Tom Mizzo in the middle, kind of playing the mediator, but. Coach loves to have a little latitude with his players to be able to voice their opinions at time. And here's the play. This was a switch play where no communication happened, and that's what the two were politely arguing about in the huddle. Yeah, it is intense as always. Oh, there's oh. a block. Bingham comes into the game. Marcus Bingham right away makes an impact. Shot blocking, a blocking specialist here at Bingham. Swat. Did they get Bingham with that foul? Was it Hall? I guess it was Bingham. Let it be known your presence early, but I like Hakez mixing it up. That foul is going to be on, on Hall. So Hakez at the line. I mean, Hakez. Chance to square it up. This is the free throw. UCLA's had issues at the line. Hey, get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. Both of these programs with their women's teams in the NCAA Tournament. And on the men's side, they meet here in the first four. By the way, since the first four began 2010-2011, at least one at-large team that played in the first four won a round of 64 game every year, except for the 2019 tournament. It has been a little bit of a springboard to success. And we showed you the four teams that have made it to the Sweet 16 out of this first four. Joy Hauser on the floor for the first time. Tom Izzo making sure he gets into his bench quickly. Rocket Watts. And that's going to bounce up and over the backboard. That'll be UCLA ball. But I like the shot. That time Rock Watts was patient. Allowed the pick and roll to happen. Bingham slid down the lane. That opened up an opportunity for him to pull up the 15-foot jump shot. You would take that with Tom Mizzo. UCLA with Mac Etienne on the floor. This is Bernard for three. The lefty, no. Watts with the rebound. Michigan State always wanting to push if they can. Sometimes their secondary breaks are just as lethal. Hauser got caught in the air. Good job, UCLA, getting back. And now Michigan State into their offense. Two-man game with Henry and Bingham. And a bad pass stepped on the baseline. That's going to be a Michigan State turnover, UCLA ball. Yeah, and that's one of the Achilles heel of this Michigan State team, the turnovers, in particular the unforced ones. When they get themselves in trouble, there are multiple turnovers that either stymie the momentum for themselves or give momentum to their opponents. When they take care of the basketball, they get better shots at the rim. That's a an area that UCLA should try to exploit. A.J. Hogarth enters down inside. Hawkins runs into Hauser. They repost him. 
Give him some room to work. He's got a flurry of moves, and he scores on Joey Hauser. He's got a lot in the toolbox, does Jaquez. Two long, lean post players. Double team comes, and a whistle. Bingham is fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot a pair. If you're Hawkins, what you want to do is get deep post position first, and now he's able to feel the body, the body of Joey Hauser. Uh, excellent footwork. Enough baseline to turn to shoot off the glass. That's an interesting matchup to watch as well. Marcus Bingham at the line. Been an impact player in the minutes that he is on the floor. The numbers don't jump off the page, but he does make an impact. Well, the big red balls are back. John Cena, Nicole Byer, they host a brand new episode of Wipeout on TBS. Don't miss all the new seasons of action. It's a whole new network. It's April 1st on TBS. Both of these teams are coming off losses in their conference tournaments. Tom Ezzo's crew losing to Maryland in the quarters of the Big Ten on Friday. That was right here, or down the road, I should say, in Indianapolis. UCLA losing to Oregon State. That incredible run for Oregon State to the Pac-12 Tournament Championship. Stealing a bid from someone. There's Hauser able to clean it up. Gabe Brown, a wild shot, but Hauser right there. Could be a significant piece for Michigan State. Can run hot and cold, Joey Hauser. That's going to be a travel. Tiger Campbell walks with it. Michigan State ball. Well, we talked about transition. And Michigan State loves to get the ball to the court, especially the advance pass. We didn't see it on this occasion, but Gabe Brown able to beat the defense down, collapse, and Joey Hauser on the backside able to clean up the miss. You know, it's, it's interesting you talked about the losses that both of them had coming into this game, but it's different. Michigan State have been playing well. Mm -hmm. UCLA lost four in a row in regards to when they've had leads, they've given them up. So two different ways of coming into the tournament based off of a loss. Okay, Brown misses. Yeah, UCLA were up 16 against Oregon State. And then lost in overtime. Singleton cashes in just on the floor, able to knock down his first three-pointer, and he can do that. Gives him instant offense. He can get rolling from beyond the arc. That is a major win for UCLA. Those are those big wins we talked about. Michigan State, they were on the outside looking in until they beat Illinois and Michigan and Ohio State. Just incredible run. Nice lead. Hogard up top for Bingham. Uh, Hogard had two options, Gabe Brown in the corner. And at the last minute, he saw Bingham and just smartly threw it right at the rim. Two-point game. UCLA down with the ball. All evened up now. Johnny Juzay, who played his freshman year at Kentucky, became eligible right away for UCLA. That's going to be an offensive foul. Henry called for the foul. UCLA basketball. How about Jalen Clark? Clark shuffling his feet that time, able to get his body and let's see if he got his chest right in the middle of the body, right there as a push off. Easy call for the official. By the way, our three officials, Doug Sermons, Patrick Driscoll, Jeffrey Clark, James Breeding is the alternate. They're going their way here to the NCAA tournament as well. Great to have the tournament back after 23 months without it. 710 days between NCAA tournament games. Riley, a long two. Langford back on the floor with Rocket Watts, and they want to push it. Brown, nothing there. It's always fascinating watch, watching Tom Izzo and his rotations. Langford, got it. That's a sweet stroke. Joshua Langford. It's so good to see Joshua back in the lineup after you know, battling, battling with injuries. To have him healthy back on the court, a court, a voice of reason, veteran player. Long two, no good. Langford, the rebound. Foot injuries for Langford. He basically missed a year and a half. Missed all of last year. Singleton trying to check Rocket Watts. Shot clock down to eight. Watts wants it himself. And the pull-up is short. 
the That's defense cool. by Singleton that time just to kind of hold a spot. Juzang for three. Can I get the bounce? That last shot, by the way, had Tom Izzo <laughs> steam it on the Michigan State sideline. Well, he cleared it out instead of running the pick and roll, which they normally like to do at the end of the shot clock, thinking that he can get by Singleton, but the discipline by Singleton did not allow him to force him to take a cont contested shot. Langford looking for Joey Hauser. Brother Sam plays for Virginia. They're both in the tournament. And the man from Stevens Point, Wisconsin, is off to a good start. He's a guy that can get the confidence rolling a little bit. He's had some big games for Michigan State, but most of those came early in the schedule, in the first eight games. So what you're saying is he's an X factor. Mm. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, I'm telling you, he really could. If he offensively gets going, this is a different Michigan, Michigan State team. Juzang, and he's going to be fouled. Timeout on the floor. Two big time programs in the first four trying to advance for a day with BYU in the first round on Saturday. It's UCLA, Michigan State. Welcome back to West Lafayette, where Michigan State leads UCLA 19 to 15 for the first time in NCAA tournament history. The entire tournament is being held in one state in a controlled environment. There have been over 9,000 tests done on these players and the coaches and the people traveling with the team. There have only been eight positive tests. It's remarkable. The teams had to do seven consecutive days of negative tests prior to arrival, then two days of negative tests in Indy. Also daily PCR testing in each team has their own floor in the hotel to name a few things, but the road looked different for each team, right? The Big Ten tournament was in Indy, so Michigan State never went back to East Lansing. They stayed here, practiced at the YMCA. UCLA, on the other hand, went over their Michigan State scout in at UCLA. Then they flew here to do their two days of, of COVID quarantining, guys. It has been a much different path, and of course, uh, Michigan State just ravaged. And with 20 days missed and three games. By the way, over on True TV right now, App State and Norfolk State are hooked up in a dandy, and it's coming down to the wire. That was a 16, make it a 19 point lead for Norfolk State at one point, and a 16 0 run for App State. That's a friendly bounce for Rocket Watts. You just never know in this tournament, Jimmy. No lead is safe here. We saw that in our first game that's between right. Drake and Wichita State. Well, and that's why you got to play it out because the swings of momentum, emotions that happen, you see a nice pull-up jump Ooh. shot right there so that Riley hits it hard. That's why you can't relax in these scenarios. Well, Rocket Watts oh, yeah. does just that, gets to the basket quickly. That was a quick pull. Tom Izzo had Watts and Lankford after they were barking at each other. They pulled them out, put them back in, and suddenly Michigan State on a little bit of a run. Mick Cronin working the officials and wants to try to slow down this Spartan momentum. 24-17. 8.47 left in this first half in the first four in West Lafayette. Well, how good is it to have the NCAA tournament back and underway? Texas Southern had a comeback win against Mount St. Mary's down in Bloomington. Second tournament win, and they won their first four game back in 2018. Right here on this floor, Drake answered two 12-point deficits, one in the first, one in the second half. They beat Wichita State. Shockers had a chance to win it at the buzzer. Could not. First win in 50 years for the Drake Bulldogs. And here it's UCLA at Michigan State. Don't forget True TV. They got a good one going on right now. Coming to the end, App State and Norfolk State for the right to play Gonzaga. Inside, Riley. Riley's been having some trouble with his contacts. He took a hard spill down on this end of the floor as well. Well, he scored one. Contact was out. He was running down the court trying to put it back in. That time, a smart mm. timeout, I thought, by Coach Mick Cronin to slow the tempo down, get the ball inside to Riley. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with the basket. I've heard of multitaskers, and <laughs> kids today, they can do that as I'm trying to tell well you. as anyone. There's Henry. Oh, man, he has got such a good stroke, Jimmy. And Aaron Henry, he played his high school ball just down the road in Indianapolis. We're about 60 miles up I-65 here in West Lafayette. Went to Ben Davis High School. And he is glad to be back in this venue. That's a nice answer on the other end. Riley once again. 
Michigan State went on a 9-2 run to stretch their lead before that last timeout. They're up seven now. They've had point guard problems, has Michigan State. Rocket Watts been hesitant to be the point. True point guard. He's more of a scorer, a shooter. And misses on the three-pointer there. Well, the strength of this Michigan State team has usually been in their backcourt outside of Draymond Green and see a beautiful move. That time by Juzang. And when they struggle at times is when, you know, point guard decisions are not in place. And that's been the one of the stories for this Michigan State team all year is the in, inconsistent play from that position. We welcome in an audience coming over from the App State Norfolk State game. And that's going to be a block underneath. We welcome you all. Congratulations to Norfolk State for advancing. UCLA, Michigan State. Got the stage to themselves in the first four at Mackey Arena. Legendary programs, legendary venue. Back at Mackey Arena, West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, let's do some housekeeping here, this last play. As Malik Hall went to the basket, Riley there to close out. You saw Pat Driscoll come in. He was pointing down to the floor. What he was pointing at was Riley was in the restricted area. It's a block. And so it is an and one. And Malik Hall at the line, a chance at a three-point play. Well, well, speaking of house cleaning, can I clean something up that's been bugging me since okay, the beginning of the game? please. Why did it take to 2016 to get a, a, a statue of John Wooden outside here? In the works. In what works? Like 40, 50? <laughs> well, are you kidding me? His number's hanging up there. He wore number 13 no, here. No, he was... That statue should have been up a long when he retired coach from UCLA. Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, they wanted to make sure that he was going to be an all-timer. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, it is one of the great connections, isn't it? That foul's going to be on the floor. I mean, UCLA has played here. This is the third time, as I mentioned, but that one connector, John Wooden, there it is. He wore number 13. He was a star at Purdue in the 30s. And the fact that um, he helped open this building. Right. It was a signature moment for Mackey Arena back in the late 60s. And been one of the great venues in college basketball ever since. Hauser. Feeling free in this game. He's had a good start to this one. Jaquez, man, he's got a great set of moves here and gets to the basket once again. At one point, Jaquez scored eight straight for UCLA. He's got a quick 10 as we approach the six-minute mark remaining in this first half. Well, what he does, he, he does an outstanding job of keeping his dribble alive. Even if he stopped right away, he continues to probe, and that time able to Stands his way right to the basket for an easy, easy layup. Hauser trying to back down Bernard. Gets the swipe. That's a turnover. Michigan State. Campbell, point guard. First team all Pac-12, Tiger Campbell. That'll be a kickball. 20 back on the shot clock. Aaron Henry are on the floor. Hey, powered by House of Highlights. Highlight Her is your destination for everything you see her do in sports and culture. Follow Highlight Her on Instagram. Back on the floor is Julius Marble. A wave of substitutions. McClellan's rotation is fairly tight. And again, more possession oriented. Curlin trying to take that same style that he built at Cincinnati mm. out to the West Coast. Hawkins again. Boy, that was halfway down. Couldn't get it to fall. And a little loose with the ball. Watts able to get it back. Henry passed up a three. Good patience, though. I mean, that time you could have easily hoisted up a shot, but why not reset your offense, get balanced, see if you can get a better opportunity at the rim. Marble wants it, gives it up, late clock, shot clock's at four, Henry, oh, cash, money, Aaron Henry, that corner three is good again. See how it comes back around to you, turns down what could have been a difficult shot, the offense worked, then it came back to you for that three. Second made three for Aaron Henry, he's got eight. Michigan State now three for five from behind the yard, Juzang no, Riley offensive board, and a travel. 
B.A., sometimes the best of decisions are the ones you turn down. You turn down the quick three for this outstanding play. The ball goes to the opposite side of the court. Now it swings back. Now you're set. Your shoulders are square. Feet are set. Mind is clear. Three ball corner pocket. Michigan State, six assists on 13 made baskets. They are up nine. Brown, he can fill it up himself. Quick release. Gabe Brown knocks down a three-pointer. Biggest lead for Michigan State. They're up 12 now. Timeout. Mick Cronin and UCLA wants to talk it over. Well, it's probably finding its way from behind the arc. The faithful are loving it right now. Michigan State up 12. Our game summary. Michigan State has opened up their biggest lead, 35-23. They are... Up 12, 16-6 run for Michigan State. And they've already played 10 players in this game. And, Jimmy, the ball's popping, and the three-pointers have been falling here in the last few possessions. Well, falling, finding the bottom of the net. This is the 32% three-point shooting team. But look at how the ball is being moved around in the clean looks that Michigan State is getting early in this game. Four for six right now. Um, and I think that's the difference because I know UCLA – and Mick Cronin wanted to tighten up the driving lanes, not allow Michigan State to get downhill and force them to be a perimeter team. Right now, Michigan State is answering the bell in regards to being proficient. Now, you don't want to live behind there if you're Michigan State, but when you're open, make sure you square up and take it with confidence. Mick Cronin's going to take a shot here. He's got a three-point specialist on the floor, and Jake Kyman got the ball in his hands here and immediately stripped. Brown got him. And now Brown steps out to his sweet spot. Good defense there by Bernard to recover. Long two on the way from Henry. And Kyman with a rebound. That's going to be a foul on Bingham as he fouls Jaquez. Another miscue by the Bruins, and this time Jaquez able to get on the inside and a little physical, which is okay. You expect that in the game pressure situation to move on to the first round. 15 foul for Michigan State. UCLA just two fouls thus far. Been a clean one for them. But they find themselves trailing by 12. Needing a basket here as Bernard lets it fly. And Bernard hits a three for the Bruins. There you go. Loosen up the defense a little bit. Knock it in. See if you can get a couple stops on this end of the court if you're UCLA. Bernard's a guy that can get hot. 39% three-point shooter. Bingham is injured. And immediately on his way to the bench, Marble returns. Oh, just writhing in pain, going for that left foot. Let's see if you can see exactly what that was. Hogard setting up Henry. And a hot pass. Nice catch in there by Marble. Yeah, Cody Roddick got caught slipping and sleeping watching Aaron Henry on the po post. And Marble able to slide right in behind him. Sneak in for an easy two. Jaquez working on Hauser. Jaquez can't get the bounce. And that's going to be a foul going the other way. It'll be a UCLA foul on Riley. Yeah, I see that. So that's Bingham right yeah. there. So it had to happen on that play prior to that turnover where it looked like he's tying up his shoe. We have to keep our eye on that because even if Bingham B.A. is not blocking a shot, he's there. And out your peripheral vision, you see him standing in the lane. Big part of the game plan for Tom Izzo, bringing that those waves of size Beautiful. out. And there's Hauser wide open, Beautiful. and Hauser cashes one in. That's beautiful basketball. Unselfish, but making a quick decision with the ball. Don't have it, swing it, swing it, knowing that you have the mismatch on the opposite side. Michigan State able to take advantage that time. Bernard goes into the chest, counted, and one. Jules Bernard taking on the big man, Julius Marble. Well, listen, last three games averaging 17 points a game, shooting about 54% is the reason why he can get that Big body downhill 
even against Marble, able to absorb that contact and get to the free throw line. Jules Bernard at the line. Let's check in with Allie LaForce. Jim and Brian, perseverance is the name of the game for Bernard, who has had multiple coaches at UCLA, but it was familiar to him because at Los Angeles Windward High School, he played for three coaches in roughly a year, sticking it out while a lot of his teammates transferred. UCLA, of course, was Steve Olford, who was replaced by an interim head coach, and now Mick Cronin. But he said the most rewarding part is it grows maturity. And to see the growth and when you put your trust into a system, watching it pay off is worth every ounce of weight. He said, you don't quit. That's not when you run away when times are hard. That's been his mentality. Hey, Ali, I agree with you. I played for 12 coaches, so I get it. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> I understand exactly what he means by that. Keep persevering, young man. Cronin raves about Bernard, and he raves about Jaquez, who is maybe their most important player when you consider the whole pie, everything that he does, Jaquez. This is Juzang now. Shot clock at nine. Jaquez looking for space. Hauser cuts him off, and just that extra move, he throws it down into third gear, and Jaquez able to score. Brown running the floor, missed the layup. He's fouled. Free throws for Gabe Brown in transition, even after the make. Now coming up, AT&T at the half. We'll get you caught up on all the latest tournament news, plus scores and highlights of the other first four games tonight. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. You know, to your point, B.A., about, you know, players, and you said Hawkeyes, you know, was the, the main guy, and, and also Juzang. But them buying into what Coach Cronin was preaching was different than what was there before. Mm -hmm. It was a different mentality, a different kind of structure, a different kind of accountability. But when your best players break through and buy in, now everybody else follows suit. And I thought that was very important for the steps needed to be taken for this UCLA team. And if you talk to Jaime Hawkins, he'll tell you, I was there the whole time. I was just waiting for some time on the floor, and that came. Last year at the Maui Invitational, he has been a key figure since. With the moving screen by Nuba, he immediately heads to the bench as he gets hit with this foul. Yeah, that's an easy call. Yeah. Turn over UCLA. Well, when you play hard defensively, you play smart, you play for your teammates, you're going to have a chance to play for Mick Cronin. You know, those are things that are not going to be compromised, especially on the defensive end. You figure that out early, you'll get some PT. Got a mismatch here with Watts on Etienne. He'll settle for the jump shot. The long three is no good. Offensive board, Henry. And Henry, nothing there. Runs into a wall of Bruins on the floor. That'll be a held ball. Possession arrow belongs to Michigan State. Now, this is one of the things Coach Izzo talked to me about, the 50-50 balls. Trying to get there often and early. Because it could be one of those games, B.A., where possessions matter, especially down the stretch. And he who gets to the floor first a lot of times gets the ball, and that time Michigan State had the possession arrow. And that sense of urgency, Jaquez disrupting that throw-in. And fortunate, Malik Hall almost lost it out of bounds. Michigan State ball, 12 on the shot clock, 49.6 seconds remaining in this first half. Spartans lead by 11. And there is a turnover. This time Hall lost it. Bernard. Ooh. Mm. Air ball for Jules Bernard. And, and that's an opportunity, a lost possession, because you want some kind of momentum going into halftime. You had a three-on-two fast break. And not that the shot was bad, but the execution that time, I think Bernard was looking at something else, kind of floated into that shot which left it short. Jalen Clark enters the game for Mac Etienne. Michigan State with a basketball. A little over seven seconds separating the shot clock and the game clock. And now Tom Izzo wants to talk it over. Michigan State has the possession. <laughs> Izzo in fine form tonight at Mackey Arena. Just puts them in a bad mood right away, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, my. Spartans led by Aaron Henry at this point. He's got eight. Rocket Watts with seven. Getting good minutes from Joey Hauser. Hauser on the bench now as we come to the end of this 
first half. Story for Michigan State. They've hit four three-pointers. They made four out of eight. So we'll reset it. Tom Izzo draws up a play. Dump it down into Henry. They, oh, nice pass again. That's worked twice now. Henry to Marble. What well, a little misdirection that time. Get it to Henry down low. Slip Marble. That's what they wanted to do. Slip him down the lane. Able to get an easy two. Okay, when your big man's active and he's moving away from the ball, it makes a huge difference. Shot clock is off. Chance for the last one of this first half. It's going to be Hockey. It's a long two. Yes. Long two is good for Jaime Jaquez. A big bucket at the end of the first half. They'll take a quick look here. It was called on the floor as a long two. And again, Michigan State, just some infighting. And, well, I tell you, Aaron Henry is all over Tom Izzo. That is not a good look. It's not right there. It's a toe. They had a toe right there. Is a hangnail, I would say, right there on the line. But a good response that time by Hawkeyes able to offset the two points that Marble got on the opposite end. Still an 11-point lead, but you're able to feel good. At least you make a shot before the half is over. If it stands as the two, which it should. So Gabe Brown, Tom Izzo going nose-to-nose. -nose. And again, seen this more in recent years with players going at it. And then Tom Izzo going at it with players and them giving it back. We saw that in the Big Ten tournament as well. So the call on the floor is a long two. And they're just confirming. I don't know if there's enough evidence to overturn this. No, I mean, it just looks like, especially having the white shoe, just watch right at the end his right toe right there. Is that on touching it? So it is a two. Yeah, and they just confirmed it. So a long two to end the half. Jaquez gives UCLA a bucket at the end of the first half to make it on a 10-point a game. 43-33. We're at the half. UCLA, Michigan State. They're in the first four in West Lafayette trying to advance into round one. Set up for the final half of basketball in the first four. It is 44-33. So they updated the Hawkes shot. And then they actually, the, the scoring stats crew uh, gave Joey Hauser a two, supposed to be a three. So that is why the score is 44-33. First half stats brought to you by Nissan. Michigan State, as usual, getting great production from their bench. Brian Anderson with Jim Jackson. Uh, I, I would like to just hear from you real quick what we saw at the end of that half. We were rolling into the studio show. What do you make of what's going on with Tom Izzo and Gabe Brown? Well, optically, it doesn't look good for either Gabe Brown or Coach Tom Izzo. But for someone that's covered the team for 13 years, I've seen this more than one occasion where the coach, whether it's Tom Izzo or assistant coach or players kind of express their emotions. Now, in an isolated incident like this on camera, it does not look good. I get it. But this is not the first or only time this has happened before. I've seen it with Draymond Green. <laughs> I've seen it with Denzel Valentine. And the list goes on and on. Where they've had these confrontations, yeah. work it out, figure it out, get on to playing basketball. And I think that's uh, the thing for me, Ali. It's it's not just that there was one player. Izzo usually has a little interaction. But it's it's actually coming from a lot of the Michigan State players uh, this point of the season. What would you hear? I can echo that. What I'm hearing and what I'm reading is similar to what Jim said. Uh, speaking of Draymond Green, he tweeted, typical Michigan State exchange. Brandon Wood said that was part of Izzo's coaching style I respected the most. And our very own Steve Smith, who works with us, and of course his son is on the team, said the exact same thing. Typical Michigan State exchange. Now I do know that they were able to resolve it, and then he went on to coaching the rest of the team at halftime, telling them we have to defend better. Movement and ball reversal was too easy for UCLA. We have to communicate better, especially on the switches, and I think that led to some of the frustration we saw between the two. All right, good reporting there, Allie. And now we're ready to go on this second half. And all of this confrontation coming with the defensive switches, it looks yep. like. That's kind of where the breakdowns happen. That's what happened between Langford and Rocket Watts early in the first half, and certainly there with Gabe Brown at the end. UCLA has possession here to start half number two, and again, the adjusted score. It's a, an 11-point Michigan State lead. Riley right away draws the foul. That'll be Marble 
who picks up the foul from Michigan State. And just to reset it, they had originally given Joey Hauser a two on a three-pointer, so they looked at it at the half, made sure they had it right, and then uh, adjusted the score accordingly. And I like the call coming out of the timeout for Cody Riley. We saw it at the beginning of the game, Brian, where UCLA went into Cody Riley right away, tried to establish themselves in the paint. Hence, you see the same thing at the beginning of the second half. All right, we spent a lot of time on Michigan State at the half and then to start the second half. Talk to me about UCLA defensively, what you're seeing with them against Michigan State and where the offense is going to have to come from for the Bruins. Well, you think about it. The Bruins shot three for six from behind the three-point line, all right? They were 50% shooting in the first half. So offensively, they didn't play bad. They just gave up some opportunities to Michigan State who was able to knock in shots like this inside and behind the three-point line. Malik Hall on a scramble, springs free inside. And Michigan State back up 11. Tiger Campbell goes with a left hand, denied. Lankford with a block right into the hands of Juzang. UCLA has been challenged offensively at times. Remember, they lost their, their best player in Chris Smith. Nice answer. Great footwork. Mm, Jaquez is having a night. Been I'm, excellent tonight. He's got I'm, 14 now. I mean, that, just that reverse pivot sent Hall back down. I think it was Hall down to the floor. And Jaquez right in his uh, comfort zone able to knock it in. Jaquez back tap that one. In the hands of Bernard. Campbell. Finds Hawkes, extra pass Beautiful. in the corner. Juzang hits a three. You answered your question right there, B.A. How can they get back into it? Well, you get stops like this. You get the ball up quick. You make the right play. Now you find yourself open for a high percentage shot. Here's Campbell. He'll fire up a three. And Riley and Marble come together. Now grabbing underneath. But when you got it going, you're going to attract defense. That's, that time, Malik Hall had to honor Jaime Hawkins in his shooting. That time, he gave it up to his partner, Johnny Juzang, to be able to knock that in. So Bingham enters for Michigan State. Marble to the bench, picked up his third foul. Here's Juzang. He just turned 20 yesterday. And he's come out and hit a couple of shots last two possessions. Great response, great energy offensively by UCLA. And again, Hakez making that jump shot maybe before half doesn't seem like a lot, but it gives you a lot of confidence, momentum going into halftime. Langford, patient, back higher, another stop for UCLA. They're down four. Riley, they bang him on him now. Hakez, better right by Hall, gets a step, little crossover. Tough shot. Hall with the board. Here comes Michigan State in transition. Rocket Watts lost the handle. And now Henry dump it down to Bingham. And it's going to be a foul on Riley. That's thrown an upset. Well, these are the plays you love to draw up. Baseline out of bounds. Simple pick and pop. That time a curl. Pick and curl. Able to knock it in. Send it to Allie LaForce. Well, UCLA's offense came out on fire, but that's not what Mick Cronin was concerned about at halftime. The 44 points was the most that UCLA has surrendered all season. He said, we have to play better on D. Our effort in the first half was terrible. He didn't try to get fancy with it. He said, just look at the scoreboard. Yep. Great call. Yeah. Well, I mean, but that's Mick Cronin. And you think about his teams at Cincinnati. They were tough, gritty, defensive-minded teams. I mean, coming from, you know, Coach Huggins, of course, they battled. So he had to restructure the mindset here at UCLA in regards to getting guys to buy into that. And you see coming out in the second half, the attention to detail in the defensive end has gotten his team right back in this game. Marcus Bingham at the line for Michigan State. Hits the first. Hey, a reminder, you can get nonstop March Madness news, picks, and highlights from every game on CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 sports network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Marcus Bingham, shot blocking specialist, and two free throws for Bingham. He shoots it well 
for a big man. It's 48-42. Michigan State back up six. 11-point halftime lead. Jaquez. Got it. What a night. 19 for Jaquez. His second made three. Three-point game. UCLA has come out shooting well. Getting the stops defensively. Henry trying to get the ball to Bingham. That's Etienne guarding him. Should still be in high school, Etienne. Bingham can't score it. Etienne's long. Langford keeps it alive. Oh, he stepped on the baseline. UCLA ball. Another positive stop. I know Langford got the offensive rebound, but stepped out of bounds right on the end. And Mac yeah. Etienne playing as good a defense as he could right, to, right there against Bingham. Etienne's a great story. Number 12 for the Bruins. Should still be in high school. He reclassified. Thought he might just redshirt. There goes Tiger Campbell all the way. Etienne to follow. Get it back and can't score it. Into the hands of Hall. A couple of looks at it for Etienne. Wow, three opportunities there. The missed shot and the two offensive rebounds, but see if Michigan State can capitalize off the misses. Hall gets stuck. Henry looking for Bingham. Inside. Going to be a foul on Singleton. Oh, Jaime Hawkins went into halftime, making a jump shot, came out still hot. Ball behind his back. Leave me open, I'll make you pay. UCLA, only down three right now. Welcome back to Mackey Arena, where UCLA has brought it within three. And no one is watching more intently than Mick Cronin's father, Harold, or as many know him, Hep. The family grew up on the west side of Cincinnati, not far from here, where Hep was a high school coach with more than 400 career wins. But COVID, unfortunately, has kept the two apart. Hep was on his way to the Pac-12 tournament last year. It got canceled. Mick told him not to come. But coach told us he's here today. You saw him right there, focused and intense. And this is the first time the two have seen each other in over a year, Brian. Yeah, Hep had COVID as well. And uh, very concerned was the Cronin family came through it well. And here he is. And you think Mick Cronin's fiery. You ought to, you ought to see <laughs> Hep in action. Speak of... Speaking of father-son, we got a lot of fiery, fiery coaches going on, but Gabe Brown is back on the floor, and that is a father-son relationship with Tom Izzo and Gabe Brown. Had that visible confrontation going into the halftime locker room. UCLA's come out playing well. They trailed at 11, by 11 at the half, coming out on a 12-4 run to start this half. Tiger Campbell probes, and now a reset. Juzang, long three is short. Henry with a rebound. Here come the Spartans. Henry, patient. And the lefty gets a friendly bounce. Hunt, but did you notice, too, that he saw coming from the backside? I couldn't see maybe that was Tiger Campbell or someone coming. He was going to give the ball up, and at the last second, he took that hop step, got himself in, inside the key, and, and finished. That's going to be a whistle away from the ball. I believe that's going to be on Hogard. Well, take a look here. In transition, Henry probing, probing. He sees Tiger out the background and then the swipe. I think that was by Juzang right there, not really committing to stopping the ball, opened it up for Aaron Henry to complete that play. Now, I'll say something about this. Look, Coach Izzo and McCrona, you see both of them fiery, intense. I had the opportunity to spend time away with both of them off the court. And they're kind of just the opposite. Yeah, totally different. You know what I mean? Mick and I sit back, have a couple cigars, <laughs> kick it, talk some stuff. And Izzo, not a cigar smoker, I forgive him, but he'll pop open a little hey, something and we'll have a good time. That's a, you have that effect on everybody, Jimmy. You, you calm the room, man. Well, I'm trying to get you to have a cigar. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Oh, there's a denial. <laughs> Bingham. So that last whistle, Bingham and Etienne were kind of jawed at each other. They separated them. Etienne wants to go right at him, and no, mm -hmm. sir. Another block. Shot clock at one for UCLA. Got to get one up quick here. Campbell to put it in bounds. 
And it's going to be Juzang. Got it off in time. And there's Jaquez. Offensive board. Going up strong. Air ball. Defended well. That's going to be a push. Wow. Juzang. UCLA with a foul. Well, you know, it's a lot of contact right there. And I mean, Jaquez probably had a complaint here. But I think Henry was straight up in the air that time on the contest. Why the official did not call a foul. Well, pressure, pressure and they force a turnover. That was just a bad pass that time by Aaron Henry. He right lobbed up. it out. Right off the fingertips of Langford. <laughs> that look says it all. Man, the <laughs> reactions of these two coaches. Hey, people ask me why I don't coach. Okay, you see those two reactions right there with those <laughs> just two? Just wearing it right now. <laughs> By the way, there are five current coaches that have been to the last 10 NCAA tournaments. There's UCLA turnover. Up ahead, Brown rolling the floor. The lefty puts it home. Well, they take it away. They give it right back, UCLA. Costly turnover. It's an eight-point game. So there are five coaches that have gone to the last 10 NCAA tournaments. Izzo and Cronin are on that list. Mark Few, Bill Self, Roy Williams, the others. And so you talk about sustained success. Yeah. Cronin with Cincinnati. And, of course, Tom Izzo on that 23 consecutive tournament streak that was in jeopardy in a big way this year. You think about where Michigan State was, Jimmy. They were sitting at 10 and 9 on the year and 4 and 9 in Big 10 play before a thrilling 2 weeks where they won 5 of their last 7. Tiger Campbell at the free throw line for UCLA. Bruins have only been to the line 5 times. They're 4 of 5. And Campbell makes his first of the night. Play the official bracket game of NCAA March Madness. The Capital One NCAA March Madness Bracket Challenge he is ready for your picks. Get your bracket started now at NCAA.com or in the March Madness Live app. Two for two for Tiger Campbell. Six-point Michigan State lead in the ball. Well, Michigan State typically one of their big weaknesses, too, is fouling. Well, a little under 20 fouls a game right now playing good defense without jeopardizing itself and putting UCLA to the free throw line. Bingham kept it alive. Another chance here for Michigan State. Watts lost the handle. Marquez comes away from it. He's always in the right spot, it seems. This is where UCLA, their goal is to make you defend the whole clock if they can. Riley down on the block with Bingham on him. Riley. Bingham pulled the chair. He went to the ground. Kept his dribble. Another block. Riley's going again. Oh, Bingham so disruptive in there. Michigan State ball. Be a foul on UCLA. And that time, Cody Riley wanted to impose his will right here as he gets up. Regains his balance. But guess what? There's Bingham Jr. with one and then the other one to contest and then pick up the foul. Now, part of UCLA, too, you know, deliberate offense, Brian, because the depth and talent, probably not to the, the, the place where Mick Cronin needs it to be. They have to be deliberate with their offense. They have to take advantage of possessions. They can't play fast. They don't have the bodies to do it in the way that probably Mick wants to. That's why those possessions are a premium, especially when you have some empty to come back to haunt you. Riley goes to the bench. And that one's good. Nice answer. Blankford. Sweet stroke. As soon as Riley goes to the bench with the four fouls. Some space opening up around the perimeter for Langford. Kenneth Muba on the floor for UCLA. This is where UCLA is hurting badly with their big men. They just don't have it as Campbell throws it away. Bernard on a cut to the basket. Campbell thought he was going to be camping on the three-point line. Yeah, but why, Bernard, why do you cut back door? You had so much confusion and white jerseys in the lane. Even if Tiger could get the ball to you, you really didn't have much space to operate. See all that space? Right there, if you stay open just a little bit more, you got an easy jump shot to knock in. Another, again, 
lost possession that time by the Bruins. Joey Hauser back on the floor. Nice first half run for Hauser. There goes Brown, a spin. Brown all the way in, and it's going the other way. That'll be a charge on Gabe Brown. That's good team defense that time. Nuba stood his ground. Well, he took yeah. a shot, man. But, but you know what, though? Early on, because he was in position already and inside the key, B.A., he was able to take a couple steps over slide to get his feet outside the restricted lane and take that charge. That was a quick run for Joey Hauser. He's on the bench. Some instruction going on over there. Marble returns. Campbell almost lost his footing, able to regain it and score it. A little mid-range jumper for Tiger Campbell. That's one thing Tom did not want to do. They want to keep Campbell particular out of the lane off his pick and rolls they know that he could score the ball or make some plays for his teammates Brown Hawkes fell down brand Brown cannot connect and a sitting rebound by Juze six-point deficit UCLA with the basketball UCLA started 13 and 3 this year had the injuries and then limped in. There's Ju Zhang. He's got another three-pointer down. That was a look of satisfaction by him. <laughs> Thrown him, by the way. Well, yeah, he called the play. He reset it. Said, called, he called the play to get to get that shot. That's happy hip. That was beautifully executed that time. Marble pulling up quickly. Missed it. Offensive board. Brown. Langford for three. Cash. First made three of the night for Josh Lankford. He's got seven points here. Henry leads away for the Spartans with 10. Hakez with 19. Juzang is chipped in with 14. Thin in the front court, and Riley's on the bench with four fouls. They spread it out. Juzang for three. Yes. Yeah, at that time, Langford went to double on Hotcast for whatever reason and left Juzang, who just hit a shot from three, to be open in the corner. Three-point game. Good answer, Aaron Henry. Henry with 12. Had a good shooting night, Jimmy. He's five out of seven. He's hit a couple of threes. He's got a couple of rebounds. He's also dished it seven times. They'll run the same play. Watch this. Try to get a switch. Juzang passed it up. Now on the drive. Juzang, no. The follow, no. And it's Henry who secures it. UCLA had missed nine in a row, then made three in a row until those two misses. Langford finds some space. He's got it. Well, see, and that's why you push it quick up the court, off the miss. That time you were able to get deep. Langford able to get to a sweet spot. I have two coaches right now. They know it's going to be intense. They know it's coming down to the wire. Marking out plays to their team. Be a little tougher. Put some meat on them. It's going down to the wire, ladies and gentlemen. Michigan State pushing a little bit. Nice little run for them. What trends are you seeing right here, Jimmy? Well, I, you know, UCLA is able to get to their spots, especially Hawkes and Juzang, but Michigan State is doing a very good job of kind of responding to their runs and Joshua Langford has been right in the middle of it whether it's here in the half court set getting to his 15 foot pull up in transition and then the open three point shot seven points in the second half and you love to have a player that's kind of been through it before as a stop gap and a safety valve we need to make something happen offensively. This is the three-year anniversary of his last NCAA tournament game. Josh Langford, he was terrific in the NCAA tournament's past, 2017, 2018 as a sophomore, then the injuries that really derailed his career. Finally back in his fifth year and back in the tournament. Late clock here. Bernard can't get it to go. The follow, no good. 
And Michigan State holds serve out of that timeout. Here's Hogard. Langford a cut. Nothing there. Now Henry's trying to go. Well, UCLA excellent defensively. Bowser back on the floor. Nothing for him on the rebounding side. Jaquez all the way. Oh, he missed it. missed it. He was right between layup and dunk. He'll settle for a three now. Okay, that'll work too. You know what? I like three. I like three points better. I mean, that time Hockey, he just lost it. But then the great hustle inside kept the play alive. Nice finish inside. AJ Hogard for Michigan State. Every time UCLA hits a big shot, Michigan State finds a way to negate it with a basket of their own. UCLA needs to be able to get a couple consecutive defensive stops. Looking inside, nice catch, and the finish. Well done, Jalen Clark. That's a guy Mick Cronin says, that's a Cincinnati-type player that he's got in UCLA Blue now. Hauser inside, posting up. Hauser a lefty two, can't get that one to go. And there's Bernard. And here we go in a four-point game, UCLA, seven and a half to go. In regulation, Bruins down four. Pick and roll action. See if they can get into it. A little isolation up top with Huck. Huck is, why not? What a night. 24 points for Jaime Jaquez. And that was a play, again, Mick Cronin called to isolate him, knowing that he could get his shot on Joey Hauser. Great play. Jaquez, an excellent defender, too. He can pick pockets. Hauser inside, kicks it. Hogard on the drive. Hogard, a little jump step. Man, looked like he traveled. It's going to be a foul on UCLA. I think they're going to get Bernard on this one. They will. UCLA creeping their way back in this thing. Good look inside for Jalen Clark. And then Jaquez, as he's done all night, 24 for Jaquez. Two-point game. March Madness is back. Winner go home time. Winner of this game advances into the East region to play BYU Saturday. A game you can see on CBS. BYU Gonzaga playing the championship game of the West Coast Conference. Got Matt Harms playing for BYU, a guy that played on in this venue at Purdue. Joey Hauser, the transfer from Marquette. At the line, two-point Michigan State lead. Spartans had a 14-point lead in the first half. Coming up next on TBS, Inside March Madness. It is presented by Buick. We'll cap all the day's action. Had some terrific games. Our first game here at Mackey Arena saw Drake win an NCAA tournament game for the first time in 50 years. They beat Wichita State to advance to play USC on Saturday. UCLA had a lead in the first half briefly. Campbell open for three. Got it. And that time, just the recognition, break down the defense, fumbled the ball. But knowing that Tiger Campbell was placed right behind the three point line, able to kick it back out for an open three. One point game. Poked away, gets Hauser's dribble back. Langford now. Clark is on him. No room. Ball on one side of the court on that possession by Michigan State. Excellent defense by UCLA. Pinned him over there. UCLA has made their last four field goals. They've got a chance to take the lead here. Down to by 11 at the half, and there's a finish inside. Jules Bernard gives UCLA the lead. First time they've been on top since it was 10-9. That was about five and a half minutes into this game. If Michigan State, too, you got to know that you're in the penalty, meaning that you drive the ball, you pick up a foul, you get yourself to the free throw line. Jaquez. Boy, he is 
such a pest on the defensive end. And he's one point away from a career high, and he's doing it in the bright lights of the NCAA tournament. UCLA in front, 67-66. We're set up for another good one here in the first four. Quickest commercial break ever right yeah, there. Man, we, that was good. We wanted to give our fans the money, their money's <laughs> worth <ball>. right now. <laughs> Ran them right back. No timeout was called. They yeah, got a whistle here. And Michigan State in the bonus here. Be one and one. Fouls on Bernard. So Malik Hall at the line. Michigan State led by 11 at the half, but UCLA came out on a 12-4 run. Reestablished themselves in this game. Pushed it to a deficit of three a couple of times. Couldn't get over the hump. Finally, they have been able to do just that. Well, UCLA has done a great job of adjusting to the defense of Michigan State, meaning on particular on the pick and roll, when they jump out hard, Michigan State defense now the screener is slipping to the basket, and they're able to get that inside, either a score or the kick-out jump shot that we saw to Tiger Campbell. Spartans back on top after the two all free throws. Juzang will pull it up. Rocket Watts a rebound. Watts trying to turn the corner. There's Henry now. It's a mismatch they like. He spins right off Campbell and scores it easy. But Too easy for right, him. But he used his right hand. Lefty knew he had a mismatch, kept the ball in the middle of the court. The help really couldn't come. And that time adjusted in the air, used his offhand and knocked in that basket. Henry's got 14 to go along with seven assists. Tiger Campbell gets by Brown, missed the layup. And he's grabbing at his right calf or lower leg. Something grabbed him as he hit the ground there. Wow, that, that was great help that time by Joshua Langford at the last minute to make Campbell adjust his sight line. Got a mismatch inside. Malik Hall is calling for it. And he wants some space to work. And Hall counted. And one for Malik Hall. He was begging for the ball with Tiger Campbell on him. It took him a while to get there, but he scores it. And a chance at a three-point play for Malik Hall. But when you got a mismatch inside, you got to take advantage of it. Malik Hall said, little fella, ain't nothing you can do with me down low. Don't forget, first round begins tomorrow at the Nissan NCAA tip-off show on True TV at noon Eastern. 16 games across TBS, CBS, TNT, and True TV. Tomorrow, you decide the games to watch. Look who's in the building. Gene Cady, the legend, longtime Purdue coach. Passed it off to Matt Painters. Had great success here. They named the floor Gene Cady Court here at Mackey Arena. Great to see Gene. I worked with Gene a few games. It was yeah. great. Uh, he was I remember at Big Ten Network. He was outstanding. Well, I worked with him there too, of course, <laughs> but he was my coach at the Pan Am Games back in 1991. Uh, Tracy Murray's in the building doing radio for UCLA, who was on that team. And you see Coach Katie on the court. You said, this guy's mean. He's soft as a teddy yeah. bear. And also, he is a bad influencer because I started drinking Maker's Mark because uh -oh. of Coach Katie. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Well, big free throw there. Hall completes a three-point possession. And now a six-point game. By the way, we're going to be going to another break here at the next whistle just so you... Don't think we were losing our minds. The officials actually forgot to take us to a media timeout. Remember uh, when they jumped a, a moment ago. That is good. And one. Bernard goes to the basket, scores it, and a chance at a three-point play. Though Bernard uses a big body. You heard of the make good, right, Jimmy? Talk to me. They're making good right They're now. Making... They, they owe us a break. <laughs> we got bills to pay. <laughs> We do it again, but big shot, big sequence. Bernard, what a finish.
He'll have a free throw to complete a three-point chance when we continue. In the new TBS comedy, Chad is a high school freshman who wants to be popular by any means necessary. Some of us can identify. Check out Chad, a new TBS comedy premiering April 6th. All right, Jimmy, we have been cleared for landing now. 3.38 <laughs> remaining. We've cleared the media timeouts. It is 73-69. It is of note that UCLA has just one timeout remaining. Both teams in the bonus. Right now, the possession arrow belongs to Michigan State. Chance at a three-point play for Jules Bernard. He's got 10 here tonight. He's playing with four fouls, and he caps off a three-point trip down the floor. It is a three-point game. Michigan State in the lead with the ball. Three and a half to go here in West Lafayette. Well, two things. Let's see if UCLA can lock in and get a stop here, but also Cody Riley back in the game. Will that change the offensive attack that's been successful for UCLA by opening up the court? We'll see. UCLA was down 14. First half. Briefly took the lead inside to Henry. And a hot pass. Bingham couldn't handle it. Shot clock is late. Down to three. Got to get one up here. Watts takes a peek. Long three on its way. Just off the front iron. And look who comes up with it. Langford. Now Watts. Little push shot is good. Boy, salvage one, didn't they? But you know what? That's been about the third or fourth 50-50 ball, loose ball that Michigan State has not only been able to retrieve, but they capitalized off of it by getting a basket. A lot of NCAA tournament inexperience on the floor, but not with Langford. Wow. He knows it. There's a block by Henry. Into the steady hands of Langford. And now Watts will get it organized. Clock ticks. Under two and a half to go. Michigan State has 14 second chance points in this game. Gives them a five point lead. Bullet pass. Langford almost lost it out of bounds. Again, late clock. Down to six. To five. Watts looking for a screen. Here's Watts. Inside. Hawkins knocks it away. And it'll be a shot clock violation. You know what? That time, I don't know why Malik Hall came over to set a double pick. Bingham was already there, so what he did, he brought an extra defender in that area, which now boggled up what options that Rocket Watch had. Great defense and hands at the end by UCLA. Huge possession here, under two minutes to go. The winner advancing to play BYU, the sixth seed in the East region in round one. That's a kickball. Langford, 20 back on the shot clock. And you see the slip. That time, they had success with Riley out of the game with the quick slip. That time, they had to post up and wanted to get Riley the ball on the post. Tense, man. This is Hell getting yeah. tense here right now. It's going to be a foul on Langford. So, Riley, remember, he's playing with four fouls. This one belongs to Michigan State. Whoa. Langford coming in, crashing the bus. Yeah, he came in hard. It was, a, it was the right call. Langford tried to... Really wanted to get over it. He had to put that top left leg over the top and try to slide in between it. But that time, ran right into Riley. Riley, 68.5% free throw shooter. And Jim, you touched on this very early in the broadcast. UCLA, as Riley knocks down the first one, they had, they've lost four in a row, but had leads in all those games at the half. They just couldn't close games. Yep. And here they are in a position where they're behind. Trying to close this one out to advance as Riley knocks them both down. Big free throws there for Riley. He's played well with the four fouls. Well, I like the pressure, too, a little bit to make by uh, UCLA to make Michigan State feel you. But also what it does, it takes a little bit more time off of the shot clock. Timeout. Tom Izzo wants to talk about it. It's coming down to the end in West Lafayette. Three-point game. Michigan State ball when we come back. In the bonus, Michigan State uses a timeout. They have two remaining. McCronin has one left. Jimmy, three-point game. Michigan State with the ball. And Tom Izzo wanted to work this possession out here at 138 to go. Well, he wanted to make sure and clear, concise, that you got the kind of set that you want. I believe what's been successful for Michigan State is either the top pick and roll with Rocket Watts or getting a post-up situation for Aaron Henry 
as the ball reverses back to the strong side of the court. There it is. And there's Henry, guarded by Bernard, bangs his way in, the lefty. And that is going to be a foul. Ooh. Juzang went up high, got him on the hand. So Juzang with the foul, free throws coming for Henry. Let's take a look. Well, sometimes you see the foul right there on the back side. You keep things simple. And what I mean by that, it, this was a simple call where Aaron Henry took the ball out of bounds, sprinted to the opposite block, posted up, and now sees himself at the free throw line. That's simple basketball, B.A. Henry, 76% free throw shooter, calmly knocks down the first to give him a four-point lead. Aaron Henry, he's been great for Michigan State in this run. Hits them both. 18 for Henry. He's made all four of his free throws. Spartans by five. Crunch time for UCLA. Hakez in the middle of the court. That's where they want to get him. He's had the big night, Hakez. Yeah. No touches yet. Juzang's hit a couple of big threes, too. Now he's on the take. Juzang, oh, and Langford is called for a foul. Attack in the basket, Johnny Juzang. And a couple of free throws for him. Smart play. Juzang recognized that a lot of the traffic was back towards half court. Baseline was one-on-one, -on -one and Langford saying, I got all ball. I think he might have caught him on the elbow on the way down. Two-shot foul, Johnny Juzang, an excellent free throw shooter. One of the best in the country. Four fouls on Langford, by the way. One, ten remaining. And also the beauty, like I said, this B.A., of getting to the line. Now you're able to set your defense. Once it goes through, now you can pick up. One possession game. There's Henry. Hawkes on him. They clear it out. Clock ticks. Michigan State with the ball in the lead. We go under a minute in regulation here in West Lafayette. Henry kicks it. Watts left open three pointer. No. Bingham tried to keep it alive, but it's Riley who secures it. Chance for UCLA. Big rebound for Riley playing with the four fouls. Hawkes lost it and a foul. Henry with the foul. That's his second. Free throws coming for the Bruins. Mm, yeah, got him on the hand. Yeah, but you really don't need to reach. And I'm going to go back to that Michigan State possession. If you, Rocket Watch, had to think about it, the shot, you probably should have pulled it back out and got a possession where you felt in rhythm. Once he hesitated, that was over now. Jaime Hockey is able to get himself to the line. One and one here, Jimmy. 66% free throw shooter. And he oh. missed it. But he's got it back. Rebound right to him. Hockey's double team kicks it. Campbell in traffic. Hockey's shot fake. Oh, count it. And one. Jaime Hockey's. A chance to tie it. You know, it's something about Hawkins. He doesn't like the simple play. Earlier, he had a dunk and missed it, but then relocated and got a three-point play, three-point bucket in the corner. This one, he misses the free throw, gets himself inside, mm. gets banged. Look at Hep. And Hep is happy now. Got a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. Career high for Jaime Hawkins. Add one more. When the lights are the brightest, 27 points, all tied at 77. Shot clock is off. See how Michigan State plays this one. They can take it down to the, the last shot if they want to. And two timeouts left. Izzo uses one right here. Oh, what a flurry. Tell you what, Jaime Jaquez, the pride of Camarillo, California, Camarillo High, putting on a show here in the NCAA tournament, Jim. Well, you wouldn't know that he only averaged you know, about 11, 12 points on the season the way he's playing right now. But sometimes a player, as the season gets going, gets into his own rhythm. And right now, Hawkins has just been dropping buckets. And the beautiful part about it is 
the coaching staff recognizing that he had the hot end continued to put him in situations to make him very effective to score the basketball. All right, let's turn the tables here. Michigan State, Izzo uses the timeout. They just let a lead get away, but they've got the ball here with 16.4 seconds. What you want to be smart. One, you don't want to shoot too soon because if you miss and don't get the offensive rebound, that gives UCLA enough time on the clock to get a quality shot up. So you want to bleed that clock down to somewhere under eight seconds and then attack. Now, what's been working for them has either been Aaron Henry on the post, if you can get him in a misdirection, or a quick pick and roll with him up top and him as a receiver, keep the court spread and try to get downhill with Aaron Henry or Rocket Watts able to come off, penetrate, get his shot. Coming down to the finish here in West Lafayette. These two legendary programs on a legendary venue here at Mackey Arena. Let's see what the Hall of Fame coach has drawn up for the Spartans. All tied at 77. Shot clock is off. 16.4 seconds remaining in regulation. Henry with the ball in his hands. He's got 18 tonight. Leads the Spartans in scoring. Bernard guards him. Here comes a screen. Comes away from it. Henry's going to pull it. And yeah, Henry, an air ball. Yeah. Bernard got a piece of that. That was deflected by Bernard. That's going to be Michigan State ball. And they're going to take a look at this. You can review under two minutes. They'll get it right. So to the monitor they go. I mean, the, how badly the shot missed. It looked like he got a piece of it in a blocked shot. Well, the play was set up, too, with Joshua Langford in the corner because he can knock down shots. His man, if he... I don't know. Ooh, I he don't didn't know get either. It. I don't think so. No. You know, Bernard's reaction right away was I didn't touch Kind of gave you that impression. Gene Steratore is with us. What do you see in here, Gene? Oh. Oh. Was it? Man. I, that's close. I don't. I think Bernard affected the shot, but I don't think he hit it. Remember the call on the floor, Gene, was a tipped ball. A block shot and Michigan State ball with 3.3. Having some issues here with Gene Steratore. Apologize for that. We'll give you some of the looks that they have as well. All right, now we got Gene wired up. Go ahead, Gene. What do you see in here, partner? Yeah, guys, I think initially what they're going over there to look at is to see when did that basketball hit out of bounds, right? We were at 3.3 on our banner, and after re-looking at it a couple of times, I'm at about 4 seconds, 3.9, but your point is well taken on the attempted block and whether Bernard makes contact with that basketball or not. Sometimes you go over there for one thing, and now you're looking at something oh. else, too, and that is really, really close. I mean, to me, Gene, it looks like even if Bernard did get a piece... Henry's fingers are still on it. He still pushed the ball forward. So now they're going to call this UCLA basketball. Wow. Okay. You know, guys, that's a great job of officiating by Doug Sermons and that crew right now. You're exactly right. Even if a fingertip touches that, Aaron Henry continues on with the shot, and it's clear to see that the last person to touch that basketball is Aaron Henry. Okay, so here we go. 3.3 seconds. Tie game. UCLA has a chance to win it right here. How far can they get down the court? It's going to be a long heave. you got to put one up. Half-court heave on the way from Juzang. Oh, ho, ho, ho. It caught rim. Put another five on the clock. We're going to overtime. Furious rally by UCLA. You're not ready to be done yet, are you? Come on, brother. That oh, that close. Overtime at Mackey Arena. Juzang almost wiped it out. We'll play on. This overtime is made possible by Buffalo Wild Wings. First overtime game of the season for Michigan State. UCLA's been in a few, Jimmy. 
This is their fifth. They're two and two in overtime. How about UCLA down five, yeah. 90 seconds to go. Juzang got them back, and now they're headed to an extra five minutes on the clock. Well, that's why you do the little things. You get stops when you need to. Again, being able to make defensive stops when it counts is what got UCLA back in this game. And then you had Hawkes Jr. knocking down some shots, but Johnny Juzang also, Juzang also contributing in there. Hawkes is going to go over 40 minutes played in this game. He has been terrific. Career high tonight for Hawkes. He's got 27. Juzang with 19 in this one. Foul trouble. Bernard and Riley playing with four for UCLA. Lankford has four for Michigan State. Want some history? Overtime games in the tournament. Michigan State, last time they were in one, 2015, they beat Louisville. UCLA got to go all the way back to 2002. They beat Cincinnati in double overtime in the NCAA tournament. All right, here we go. Overtime number one. And Michigan State will control it. Campbell guarding Watts. Michigan State just couldn't get the shot they wanted in those last few possessions. Here's Henry now with the right hand. No, his offhand. And coming out of the pack with it is Bernard. UCLA, chance to take the lead now. Yeah, stop one right there for the Bruins. And the play has been Hawkins in the middle of the court. Winner will match up against BYU on Saturday. Enter into the first round in the East. Juzang. A lot of dribbling here. Juzang, he wants it. He takes it. He scores it. Johnny Juzang. 21 now. Oh, great recognition. He knew he had Rocket Watts, a smaller player on him. He just wanted to get to the middle of the court, get two feet in the lane, knowing then height as an advantage shooting over the top. Michigan State desperate for a basket. And that's an air ball from Rocket Watts. Well, size matters. Juzang able to get himself in the lane, and then Rocket Watts takes a shot from behind the three-point line that didn't hit anything. Lost possession by, by Sparty. This is a 7-0 UCLA run, the 5-0 run to tie the game to force overtime. And knocking down that first shot here in the OT. Juzang again. He goes. Juzang scores it. Just take it over here, Johnny Juzang. But Coach Tronin on the sideline told everybody to get out the way so Juzang can go one-on-one -on -one with Joshua Langford. 9-0 UCLA run. Screws are tightening for Michigan State right now. You can see it in their body language. Yep. Under three minutes to go in the first overtime. Langford, Hawkes on him, spins right into him, turns it over. Discombobulated right now on offense, but give credit to UCLA's defense. They're closing down the driving gaps, not allowing Bingham or Henry to get clean post up. That's leaving the guards for Michigan State to have to make plays, and right now they're not able to do it. Bruins lead it by four, chance to add to it. Riley with the four fouls, kicks it. Hawkes, no. Bingham with the rebound. And Langford is fouled on his way in. Tom Izzo, he's going to make a change here. Hogard's coming in. Juzang with the foul. That's number three. Nick Cronin upset. Two shots here for Langford. No basket. And he misses. Boy, the opportunities are falling by the wayside for Michigan State. Watts is out. So Izzo going to take a chance here with A.J. Hogard. Looking for better point guard play down the stretch with 2.21 left. 
One out of two from Langford. Finally, Michigan State scores. Tiger Campbell content to use as much of that clock as he can. Hawkes and Juzang, you figure those are the two they're looking for. Campbell takes a peek. Nine on the shot clock. Campbell gives it up. Juzang, length right on him. Excellent defense. Shot clock at two. Tough shot. Can't get it to go. And another chance. That's Riley with the offensive rebound. Big, Big time. Boy. Big time rebound that time by Riley. In between two Michigan State players, able to keep it up and alive. Juzang, he's going to pull it. Three-pointer. No. And it's all with a rebound. Big board, Malik Hall, three-point game. You guys are tired, man. They're tired, you can tell. Timeout, Tom Izzo. Putting in the hard minutes in the NCAA tournament. The first four. Michigan State with the ball, down three. Let's look at the game reset. UCLA, two timeouts. Michigan State down to their last timeout. Each team in the double bonus. If there's a tie-up, a held ball, UCLA has possession. What are you looking for, Jim? Well, I mean, they haven't been successful, Michigan State, in kind of getting a direct post-up. They need more movement within their offense. That's how they were able to get those driving lanes, or it has to be a quick-hitting play. I think that's why Hogard is in the game for his decision-making down the stretch of this basketball game. Joey Hauser on the floor as well. Hogard gives it up to Hauser. He's going to take that big shot. Oh, it's off his fingertips. Henry couldn't control the pass and a costly Michigan State turnover. Well, the ball was outstretched, but that time, instead of reaching with his right hand, inside hand, he reached over the top with his left hand. Now, Joey Hauser should have allowed Henry to set first before he threw the pass. So two mistakes there by the Spartans coming out of the timeout. Another break for UCLA to see if they can take advantage of it. Golden opportunity here. They lead it by three as we go under a minute in the first OT. Juzang, a spin, gets stuck, gives it up. And I will take a look. Shot clock down to seven. Nice run to the rim. Riley, two-handed jam on the rim run. Five-point game right back at him. Langford scores quickly, and Juzang is down. Oh, no. He is down. He is hurting. He's been dealing with ankle problems. I saw him grab his knee on that mm. one. He missed the last regular season game of the year with an ankle, and, boy, let's hope he's all right. It is yeah, biting maybe. him right now. Uh Oh, he said he's okay, okay. Yeah. Maybe something just quick, just good to see him get up. Oh, man, they're helping him off. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, that's, that does not look good. Maybe not saying I'm okay. Maybe saying I can't, I can't go. I can't walk. Oh. Had a brilliant night. Juzang scored 21, right? Oh, oh yeah, his right ankle extended it. it. Well, hold up. Let's go back and let's see if it's his right ankle that turned over. <laughs> so let's see. Take a look at his right ankle. When Langford comes right there, it, it turns over. When Langford comes down, as Juzang was trying to plant his foot, I believe it turned over. Excruciating pain. Juzang is out. Singleton enters for UCLA. 
Michigan State with a quick basket. And Juzang, such a great foul shooter, too. Yep. Huge loss. And that was their isolation one-on-one -on -one play against Langford now that you lose, and you talked about his free throw shooting, too. Tiger Campbell will use as much as he can. Three-point game, first overtime, and McCronin uses a timeout here. He'll have one left. Well, Tom Izzo's mantra all these years has always been to defend and run. And they just did that. They gave up a basket, but quickly down the floor to make this a one possession game. March Madness, nothing like it. So you're without Juzang now, Jimmy. David Singleton, he's hit big shots. He's a three-point shooter. And you wonder where they're going for offense right here. Hawk has played monster minutes tonight. He's got a career high 27. Well, well what's worked for him? Hawk has in the middle of the court with a pick and roll and then the slip screen because Michigan State hedges and jumps out hard. That's how Riley was able to get the last one down the middle. So let's keep our eye on the middle of the court, especially when the pick and roll is being set. Riley's done a great job playing with four fouls, and now he is hounded by Hall. Free throws here for Cody Riley. Just a 69% free throw shooter. So UCLA is confirming it's a right ankle injury. He's been dealing with the ankle problems. He looked free and easy tonight until that play. Yeah. Big free throws coming for Cody Riley. Oh, right. Stepped up there with confidence and knocked it down. Well, you talk about the health of Juzang. You talk about getting past this game, a quick turnaround to have to play this weekend. So hopefully that ankle, if UCLA can survive this, is just a tweak. We see him walking around yeah. on the sideline. He is trying to walk. Mick Cronin's looking right at him. Yep. Four-point game, two-possession game. Langford, clock tick, shot clops off, comes up short, Langford, and look at the rebound. Big board for Jalen Clark. Free throws coming for UCLA. Reality starting to set in here for Michigan State. It's not over yet. But if UCLA makes their free throws, they'll put it away. Man, what a big time board that was from Clark. Ooh, they're feeling it. They are. They deserve it in regards to how they fought back in. It could have easily folded based on their history of not being able to finish games. This one, they fought and clawed from behind. Freshman at the line, Clark got it. 75% during the regular season. It's a five point game, 13.9 seconds. UCLA was down five with a minute and a half to go in regulation and a flurry to get it back to tie it. And now a chance to advance. Michigan State's got to go quick. Six point game. Brown for three. No. Jaquez kept it alive. In there is Bernard, and that's going to do it. UCLA with a flurry at the end of regulation. And they kept the pedal down in overtime. Boy, what a gutsy comeback by UCLA. So much to unpack with Michigan State as well, Jimmy. They had their chances. They couldn't get that put-away bucket at the end of regulation. Well, but they couldn't get the stops when they needed I thought the adjustments that Mick Cronin made offensively to utilize or to use Michigan State's aggressive nature 
of showing on the pick and roll to hit the back door cut. I mean, the um, slips to the basket, but then recognizing the mismatches on the court one on one and isolating, you know, Hakez and Juzang in critical moments where Michigan State couldn't get stops. They are at the review station here, just taking a look. I think they're maybe checking the clock here, I think. Right now, 3.4 on the clock. Bernard's at the line. UCLA has outscored Michigan State 53-36 in this second half in OT. That includes a 14-3 run in the final 6-10 of the second half in OT. So the final six minutes plus. Just three points for the Spartans. And Hep Cronin hasn't seen a son in a year. So, yeah, they put a couple of seconds on the clock, 5.3. Now, Mackey Arena continues to be a house of horrors for Tom Izzo and Michigan State. It will be their sixth consecutive loss in this building. And one that slipped away for the Spartans. Slipped away, but the other team had a lot to do with how this game has turned around. Clock's going to run out on Michigan State. One second left. A career night. 27 points for Jaime Jaquez Jr. Hogarth takes the final shot. That's it. UCLA, a comeback win. And UCLA in Mackey Arena will advance. And a matchup against BYU on Saturday. Into the line for Tom Izzo and the Michigan State Spartans. Boy, what a win for the Bruins. Coming out of the Pac-12, down 14 points. They win it by six. Jaquez was brilliant. 27 points. Had a couple of assists. Was 11 for 20 from the field, including three three-pointers so the first four is in the books Norfolk State advancing to play Gonzaga we saw Drake win a thriller over Wichita State <laughs> and Hep Cronin says no nope, I'm going right down here to see my son <laughs> uh, that was a great shot it's funny how the tables turn UCLA have been the team that have had lead but given it up and not able to finish. This time they fought and scrapped from behind and they turned the tables and were able to make the plays down the stretch that allowed the team to advance. So great resiliency from a team that have been struggling mentally with those four losses in a row coming into this game, B.A. And you know, playing... Without Chris Smith, obviously Jalen Hill's away from the team, so th they know what they are now, and they're starting, it looks to me, Jimmy, like they're starting to figure out how to play without their two big men. Riley got in foul trouble, they went small, they spread it out, and they found something. That's a, that's a big win, that's a nice one for UCLA. Snap that four game losing streak. Good job, Jimmy. Great to be with you, we'll see Come you on, Saturday. Baby. We got more to go, baby, let's go. For Jim Jackson and Allie LaForce, Brian Anderson, saying so long from West Lafayette. Stay tuned for Inside March Madness, presented by Buick. Now let's send it to our studio.